For a couple of years now, stories have surfaced that Joe Biden's son, Hunter, used his family influence to score an energy deal in Ukraine and that he set up meetings with his dad. The rumors have been debunked by The Washington Post and The New York Times, but they surfaced again this week in The New York Post, complete with transcripts and photos allegedly from Hunter Biden's computer. And then the story gets really weird. The New York Post claims a smoking gun email reveals how Hunter Biden introduced his dad to a Ukrainian businessman. That, other related emails, and a lurid sex tape were found by a Delaware repair tech, purportedly on computers dropped off by Hunter Biden. I saw stuff that made me uncomfortable, and I felt afraid and fearful of Repercussions. Reporters from the Daily Beast and Fox News pressed John Paul Mac Isaac for details on how he discovered what was on the computers, who he told, where the computers are, and whether it's a hoax. Is there any thought in your mind that this could not, that this might not have been hunters and might have been somebody trying to set hunter up? No. Meanwhile, the New York Post says they received their computer data from President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani. The story's sourcing has also raised questions about its authenticity. In any case, once the story went viral, Facebook and Twitter blocked most users from reposting the story. Twitter said the link might be unsafe, while Facebook simply said they were reducing its distribution. The New York Post and others have struck back, claiming censorship. And Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey admits they could have handled it better. Still, if this is an elaborate hoax, it's a darn good one. Kennedy, I have to say, even if this thing has been completely debunked, this is great. It is right out of a Russian playbook with the lurid sex tape and all that. But there were some things of Hunter Biden on that. But this whole idea that uh, Facebook and Twitter in particular were playing censor, what, what was your take on that? They, they were just they were saying, hey, this, this, this is possibly serious disinformation, you know, two weeks before an election and we're not going to promote it. You know, this is a an issue that Twitter and Facebook, uh, especially Facebook, have been wrestling with for years now, and they really don't seem to know how to handle it. Uh, I would point out in this case that it wasn't really difficult to get on the web and go find the stories on the New York Post. It's not like you needed Facebook and Twitter to find this stuff. Uh, the other thing is that by acting as they did, I think that Twitter and Facebook ended up... Uh, giving this story much more amplification than it would have received if they had simply um, if they had simply uh, let it uh, play yeah. out as it normally does. <laughs> you, you know, it's it's this is a dichotomy that we've talked about many times. We have a free, completely open web, and then we have these closed systems, and we don't seem to be able to decide as a culture whether or how they should be handled differently. I agree. Um, I think that that their actions really did amplify the piece, even if you couldn't share it directly on their platforms. Um, but this isn't a freedom of the press issue. This isn't a First Amendment issue. These are private companies that get to choose what they will and will not allow on their platforms. And I think people keep forgetting that when they cry censorship. The article was not censored in general. You could still find it elsewhere very, very easily, as Dan points out. You just couldn't necessarily share it. As for the article itself, um, when when you've got an entity owned by a friend of the president taking information that was given to them by the president's lawyer and then not independently verifying it, it might not be a hoax. That stuff really might be Hunter Biden. It might really be on there. But it's important to remember that Hunter Biden's actions speak less about Joe Biden than Trump's actions speak about himself. Is this equal to everything mm. else that's been out there in the news? I'm not sure it really is. Well, this is just going to be a big old mess any way you, you presented this, because somebody is going to think you're trying to prevent them from seeing stuff. And the fact that all of you have said you can find this somewhere else doesn't mean that most people would uh, stop being lazy and go look for it. It's much easier if it's <laughs> sitting right there. So that's really the crux of the matter. Why do I have to go look for it someplace else um, if I really want to see it? But for, uh, for, for the social media uh, companies, uh, you know, finally, somewhat, taking a stand at trying to prevent or slow the spread of information that could be fake, I mean, I think is important here. So I, I, we've all talked about there is, it's a lot late 
Um, they should have been doing it sooner. They should have better plans. But I'd rather them slow the spread of something that seems explosive now because they cannot verify whether or not this story is right than allowing everybody and their mother to just spread it around. And oh, by the way, Twitter just started a new project where they're um, asking people, uh, putting a note if they get ready to retweet something and say, don't just look at the headline. Do you read the story before you mm. push it on? So I think it's par all part and parcel of they're trying at least uh, to, you know, get some more trust built back into the company and at least stop some of this stuff that could be fraudulent. And you know what? I actually agree with you. Um, I think this, this, this is a very complicated situation. There is no right answer. And um, it is true, I think, that, you know, the Twitters of the world or the Facebooks of the world are essentially making this up as they go along. They're, they're pivoting and trying things based on whatever the situation is. Um, so, you know, good for them in doing something, although it may not be perfect. If they didn't do anything at all, um, then that could have been a big issue and a big story as well. The one problem that comes out of this, at least from where I sit, is that, you know, you always hear um, from those mostly on the conservative side that there's a lot of, uh, you know, conspiracy algorithms out there that are preventing certain stories from being uh, shared or, um, you know, amplifying other stories. And I think, you know, whether or not that happens on an ongoing basis and it's politically motivated, this kind of adds a little fuel to that argument. And I think that's that's the big takeaway from a story like this. So on this one, Dan, no one else got this, right? I mean, nobody else was given this computer data. So, I mean, and, and I noticed the New York Times didn't really do a follow-up with it or any, you know, national news organization for that matter. Well, the Times and the Post both did follow-ups saying that they've been unable to authenticate. Oh, no, yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, there are many, many reasons to think that this story is fake. Uh, I'll just point to one. If Rupert Murdoch really wants to stick it to Joe Biden, uh, he could have had the Wall Street Journal do this story. But he doesn't want to trash the journal's brand. So he puts it out there in the New York good Post. Good point. There you go. All right. Good point.